welcome to the best 3D application of all time. There are many pretenders out there, Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, Houdini, but none come before Blender. Take my word for it and join our cult. For today's initiation, I'm going to show you the best techniques for creating materials, shaders, and texturing in Blender. When texturing, placing a logo onto a texture can be tricky. Most people try to manually paint it on or fight with UV maps for hours, and it just ends in frustration and broken keyboards. But there's a smarter way. Use the coordinates of another object to control exactly where the logo lands without pain. Just import the image into the shader editor, and to assert dominance, let's use Houdini's logo because why not flex a little? Now, with the shortcut Control T, add the coordinates set up. This only works if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, so don't skip that. Then, add an empty into your scene and set it as the target object. In your image texture node, switch the projection method to box. Now, when you move, rotate, or scale that empty, you're actually moving the logo around perfectly on the, the surface like a boss. You can even animate the empty later if you, if you want the logo to move across your object during a shot. Clean, powerful, and maximum flex. You need to make your texture look way sharper without crying over blurry pixels? Here's a power move. In your shader, after you load the image texture, set the interpolation mode from linear to closest. It's like putting laser focus glasses on your texture. No more muddy, washed out mess. Closest interpolation makes everything pixel perfect sharp, perfect for stylized art, pixel art textures, crisp logos, or if you just want that ripped straight from a PS1 disc. Kind of retro vibe. Want your metal to actually look like metal and not some sad plastic imposter? Here's the real deal. Crank that roughness value way, way down. But don't leave it at absolute zero because nothing in the real world is ever perfect. Set it to something tiny like 0.02 or 0.05. This keeps the reflections crazy sharp but just rough enough to sell the realism. Want to flex even harder? Layer a noise texture into the roughness input so that your metal has microscopic wear and tear. That little randomness breaks up the reflections and sells the material like nothing else. Combine that with a slightly tinted reflection color. Real world metals often reflect tinted light, not pure white. And now your metal looks forged in the fires of Mount Doom instead of printed from a 90s laser printer. Tired of the same boring procedural noise everyone uses? Stop being basic. Start layering that noise like a cake. Mix a stretched noise texture, use the mapping node to stretch it on one axis with a squashed Voronoi pattern. Multiply them together, add them, subtract them, do whatever you need. Smash them around until it starts looking messy. Real life doesn't care about clean patterns. Your dirt, rust, ground textures, rock faces, all of them will look 10x more natural when you stop treating your procedural nodes like precious little treasures and start beating them up until they cry textures of glory. Bonus, layer even more noise with different scales for crazy multi-frequency detail, and bam, you're a noise wizard. Lighting looking flat? Time to fix that rookie mistake. Drop a massive area light in your scene, angle it off to the side, and set the color slightly warm, orange, or slightly cool, blue, depending on your mood. Suddenly, your object has depth, shadows have feeling, and highlights look buttery. But wait, don't stop there. Throw a tiny sharp point light somewhere else, maybe from behind or from a weird angle. Uh, that second light will create spicy little specular hits that make your materials pop like a music video. Layer in a few subtle rim lights too if you're feeling dangerous. Now your render doesn't just exist, it punches you right in the eyeballs with beauty. Want your bump maps to pop harder than a gym bro flexing in front of a mirror? Here's the cheat code. Add a color ramp between your bump texture and the bump node itself. Squash those black and white points closer together until your bumps are crisp. This lets you control how soft or hard the bump detail shows up without redoing the texture itself. If you want crispy, worn metal, sharp rocks, or dramatic skin pores, this move is mandatory. You can even animate the color ramp over time to fake growing damage or wetness creeping across the surface. Don't just accept the bump output raw. Grab it, shape it, mold it into something glorious. Need to make a plain, boring wall instantly believable? Take your roughness input and mess it up, hard. Add a noise texture, and not just any noise. Mix two different noises, one for tiny grime, one for big blotchy stains. 
add a few color variations into your base color too, even if it's just slightly lighter and darker patches. No wall on planet Earth is one flat shade. Add a super subtle bump map for things like dust layering. And if you're feeling fancy, drop some decal textures like scratches, graffiti, and cracks. Every little touch is another level of believability. Boring surfaces kill renders. Textured surfaces bring them to life. Need to fake fancy decals without fighting UVs for three hours and wanting to throw your computer out the window? Here's the big brain strat. Inside your shader, mix your main material with an image texture through an alpha over node setup using the empty method we talked about earlier. This way, your graffiti, logos, or bullet holes can be positioned manually without touching UVs at all. Want to move the logo mid-shot? Animate the empty. Want to swap it out last minute? Just replace the texture in the shader. Ultimate freedom, zero headache. You'll wonder why you ever bothered with painstaking UV mapping for simple decals in the first place. Trying to get that gritty, wet street vibe without slowing your render down to turtle speeds. Do this. Duplicate your ground material and create a second one that's super glossy and has almost zero roughness. Then mix the two materials together using a noise texture as the factor. Result, only some parts of the ground look wet, like puddles or fresh rain. The drier parts keep their rougher look. Your scene suddenly looks alive, detailed, and dynamic without needing a single drop of real fluid sim. If you add a little bump to the wet areas too, it'll look like puddles are catching light in all the right places. Fast, effective, and sexy. And if you're fired up after all this and ready to start building your own tools, generators, crazy shaders, and effects instead of just copying tutorials, you gotta check out the Master Geometry Nodes course. It'll turn you into the kind of blender wizard who doesn't just make scenes. You build the systems that make scenes. If you're more into blowing stuff up, summoning storms, or making your projects look like they were shot on a Hollywood backlot, the Blender VFX course is where you level up. And if you're feeling truly dangerous and want to step into the big leagues, learning Houdini, yes, the legendary software, then the Houdini for Blender Artist course is the move. Trust me, once you unlock that, you're not just playing the 3D game, you're rewriting it.